to a very important debate that affects uh, this house and also affect the people of Kenya in regards to the communication that was done by the president in terms of uh, uh, you know making sure that we amend the constitution Mr. Speaker some of the issues that the president uh, wrote about is one of the issues of the NGCD of to make sure that it is enshrined within the constitution the NCDF, the NGCDF is so important to the people of this republic because it has enabled the Kenyans and the, and the people of Kenya to at least have an opportunity to go to school, make sure that we improve the inf uh, infrastructure, school infrastructures, especially on alias, even in my constituency, whereby we are dealing with poor infrastructure that since independence they have never been uh, uh, modernized. The students have been, been use, using you know, old schools, old furnitures. This NGCDF has enabled us to modernize our schools, make sure that we give bursaries to the people and to the people of Kiamba constituency, and also making sure at the end of the day that we have kept our students and our, our students in the school so they can have an opportunity to be educated and to make sure that we eradicate poverty in our constituency, Mr. Speaker. The other issue that the President wrote about is about of making sure that the office of the official position is enshrined within the Constitution so that we can give an opportunity and a job to the leader of opposition. We have seen him reitering around within the, uh, the, uh, within the, the boundaries of our Republic. So if we make sure that this office is enshrined within the Constitution, at the end of the day, we'll have a duty and a role to pray, to make sure that he check the executive, to make sure that each and everything that the executive is doing is being monitored. And we don't want him to just be retailing without an office. It is important to have a budget so that he can be able to audit and check the, 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 the government of the day and the performance of the government of the day. So that also the government of the day can be able to put more effort on issue-based uh, things that are, you know, are, are, that are actually enabling and helping the Kenyan citizens to make sure that their life is better than the way it is. Mr. Speaker, some of these communication, they are very, very important. We make sure that the office of the opposition that even if any person participate in an election and is able to win an election and is able to become number two or become the leader of opposition, he will help to guard and also to protect the, the, the interest of the Kenyans across the board, Mr. Speaker. Therefore, we are supporting the uh, amendment of this constitution, Mr. Speaker, and we make sure that some of these things we will not be able to deal with the same case we have seen with the issue of two to three, Mr. Speaker, that the government exaggerate the usage and, and misuse of two to three because there is no official leader of opposition who is, keep, who is checking the government and the performance of the government of the day. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, I'm in support that we should amend the constitution and make sure that some of those things that the president have laced, we have been able to put them within the constitution for future references, Mr. Speaker. I therefore support the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable um, uh, John Kagoshia, the MP for Mkuruweni. Make your contributions. Honorable Speaker, I want to thank you for this opportunity. And I would like to uh, support the proposals by His Excellency, uh, His Excellency the President uh, in bringing the amendments to this House. And of course, one of the amendments that we have is uh, in regard to the official of opposition leader. And this position, Honorable Speaker, the reason why I support is because this is going to be for posterity. It's going to help our nation uh, to bring the official opposition leader in the House so that any person who occupies that position is able to make contribution which is meaningful to the country, is able to contribute and also add his ideas and his agenda as an alternative uh, government and those proposals and policies that are proposed by the official of, of opposition can actually be adopted by government and also be implemented. It is unfair that the official of op uh, opposition leader uh, finds himself in a way that he uh, incites the public in the public rallies, in demos, in mandamanos, in the streets in a way to uh, urge Kenyans 
to engage in illegal activities to help him uh, be able to get what he uh, argues he did not get when the election was conducted and when the election was completed uh, last year. It is important that instead we bring this uh, leader to the House and have him make his arguments formally and in a way that can be interrogated also. Because, you know, there's nobody who can interrogate you there in the public rallies. There's nobody who will be able to ask you questions as to why you have that stand or that belief or that persuasion and why you're inciting the public. Instead, it's important that those persuasions that the official opposition party does have they are brought to the people in a formal way, in a way that they can be interrogated. Mr. Speaker. Uh, Honorable Kaguchi, I, I'll give you two more minutes. I, thank you, Mr. Speaker. You, you, you sound more knowledgeable. I wanted you, before you go to the next point, to explain to people how you can bring the leader of the official opposition to a parliament in a presidential system where there is no opposition. Honorable, honorable Speaker. Yeah, just elaborate that so that uh, uh, Parliament can proceed. Well. Honorable Speaker, the reason why we are in this uh, assembly is to legislate. And one of the things that uh, we intend to do is to legislate as per the proposals that uh, uh, His Excellency the President has brought to the House on how we can make uh, this position uh, uh, formal and uh, how we'll make this position uh, availed to Kenyans uh, for posterity. So, Honorable Speaker, uh, the question that you have raised is an important question, which we are going to be deliberating and debating and uh, engaging on so that we can be able uh, to look at our constitution because we are actually reviewing or we are looking at our constitution so that we can see how we can now be able to uh, bring provisions that are going to allow exactly what you have asked for so that you can have the official position uh, formally in this assembly. So, Honorable Speaker, our work is to legislate, and we are going to do exactly that so that we can be able uh, to bring and to make this possible. Honorable Speaker, we also have the two-thirds gender rule uh, that uh, has been proposed uh, to be able to achieve this in our new dispensation. And I would want to uh, make this further proposal, and this is also one of the things that we are going to be looking at when we are going to be uh, implementing this uh, a two-thirds gender rule in the assembly through the legislation and through the constitutional change that uh, we are proposing here. And what I propose is that because of the costs that are involved in selecting or in nominating uh, many women or uh, women leaders, let me say that, to balance the gender, I propose that we give precedence to nominating uh, people with disability people who are going to represent minorities, in ethnic minorities, people who are going to be representing other special categories. We nominate them ahead of the, uh, the women uh, nominees in the assembly. And once we do that, then we take that number and look at it in totality, and then use that number now to calculate the two-thirds gender so that we can see how many more women do we need to be able to balance the equation. And in a situation where we have more women in the parliament, then how many more men do we need uh, to be able to balance the equation? And that way we are going to reduce the number of men or women who are going to be nominated in this assembly so that we are also sensitive to the costs that are involved. Honorable Speaker, you are aware that we have been debating the supplementary budget in this assembly this afternoon. And of course, one of the major concerns of any Kenyan anywhere is the cost of running government. The recurrent uh, budget of this government, of, co of course, of government, as it has been uh, for quite some time, has been way beyond what Kenyans can be able to manage. And for that reason, then, we need to look for ways and means of ensuring that as much as practically possible, we have reduced... Uh, the number of nominated seats in the National Assembly. And that's why I propose, when we are looking at this gender, uh, to that gender rule, we must then, first of all, nominate all those other positions. And then use that number to calculate the final number that is going to help us understand how many uh, women we are going to nominate. Lastly, Honorable Speaker, we have the NGCDF Act uh, that uh, we looked at in this, or NGCDF uh, motion that we looked at in this house, and the main purpose was to ensure that we again mainstream it in our constitution. The Honorable President, I mean, the, His Excellency the President, in his wisdom, has also proposed 
that we do mainstream this in our uh, constitution. And I would want to point out that this is very important and very key for us as an assembly because we are going to deal with the naysayers. We are going to deal with the busy bodies that have been in the corridors of justice every other day trying to derail this very important uh, um, aspect of our resources which go directly to the people on the ground. And I'm sure if the people on the ground were asked to vote on NGCDF, you will find that every other common man, every other person who depends on the bursary that they receive from the NGCDF would be voting with uh, the members of parliament on this. But some people, busybodies, have shown like uh, the members of parliament uh, have been pursuing the NGCDF for their own benefit. But that is not the case. This is for the case and for the benefit of the common monarchy in the Republic of Kenya. And so, Honorable Speaker, what I propose is that not only do we entrench the NGCDF in, the national, in our constitution, but we also enhance the mandate. You realize that we have been uh, looking at the education, we have been looking at the security issues, but now we also need to enhance this mandate for the, for the NGCDF much more so that we can be able to help um, in other smaller issues that trouble our people in the villages. Look, for example, on the issues of uh, uh, irrigation water. NGCDF, earlier on, was able to address some of those small, uh, NGC, I mean, uh, small uh, dams and uh, intakes that would help small uh, irrigation schemes that then would help the villages to irrigate their land. Unfortunately, after the, the mandate was removed from the NGCDF and given to the counties, most of those have been abandoned, have been forgotten, and have not been uh, taken care of over the years. And so I would ask that as we are looking at this, let us enhance the mandate of NGCDF so that we can be able to do much more in, uh, in addressing the things that uh, are concerning our people. And of course, uh, uh, Honorable Speaker, what you realize is that by us doing this, we are going to be uh, helping our people on the ground to have a larger benefit of government in terms of uh, what they are able to do, especially when they are able to educate their children and of course uh, be able to do many other things.